be on fire. We be lit, lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big. Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know, my dear, we're all gone. I want y'all to go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. But definitely check out our Patreon channel because that's where you're going to find our full length interviews after a while. Well, not even after a while, they're now, but. If you want to see the full interview before he start doing all the clips, because you know he going to chop it up. Hater. So y'all need to go Real check out, hater right subscribe, here. so you can see the whole full-length interviews before he take two months, three months before he go release it. All yeah, right? but you can always get that membership and go up there and see as soon as it, as soon as it drop. First clip drop, you can buy into the membership. On ain't. YouTube, too. It's about four bucks a month. It ain't that bad, bro. If you want to see everything firsthand before everybody else, yeah. it's always And y'all love the content? Might as well as support the brand. If you still been here this long, because we've been here now a couple of years going down, man. Check it, man. We got a special guest in the house today. He don't need no introduction. He been on here before. Drip Jesus in the building. Yes, sir. Big drip. Big drip. Man, it's going <laughs> down, man. So, man, it's good to have you back on the show, man. Oh, You're going to have to get oh, into it and tell me what's been going on in that young world. You know, you the young world is different than the old world. Y'all outside. We outside. See, man. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> hey, out and about for real, man. Man, you yeah. been in L.A.? Yeah, I've been in L.A., yeah, this whole time, man, for real. So, you, are you, because that night when me and you had that interview, mm -hmm. you said you was leaving. Did you leave and just ain't been back till now, or you been dipping back in there and ain't nah, nah, back I've been, I've been Oh, you been back dipping back? Yeah, I, I got, you know, I just come in and sit <laughs> Every now and then, and then you know I pop right Why back out. Why you ain't called me, man? Man, I know how you. I do. had to reach out to you. Man, <laughs> come on, bro. I don't even have, look, 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 look. You know, hey, look. You know I'm liking and commenting all day, man. So nah, I mean, you I, always I'm rock support, with me. Man, for Thank sure. you so yeah, much, yeah, man. Yeah, man. But I definitely reached out because I was like, man, we ain't sit down in a minute. And last time we kind of was, you know, we, we had a lot going on. I wanted to get you back in here, man. Mm -hmm. What did you What do you think about this guy, man? Because he do the he it was a basketball conversation, modeling conversation going on, man. He in this, he in the right place. I'm gonna ask you about that writer strike, all kind of stuff going nah. on in there. LA. I got to get with you about that no, because literally. we can get into it now. Like, like what, what is that temperature like? Like everybody, I mean, Faze on Love called me. He was like, E man, you see the writer strike? I said, yeah, what's up with the writer strike, man? He say, that's because people not getting recognized for their craft, man. Nah, they man. not paying these guys, man, they and they not. trying to stream stuff and it's done changed the temperature thing. Let's talk about that a little bit. Like, what is this transition like? far as when you from your perspective yeah man just being on the like the inside of the industry like me actually living in la living in hollywood it's actually it's crazy experience because you gotta understand the people i'm surrounded with number influencers and creatives so every single person i'm with is either going to be um, an actor a model a musician and if they're not they're behind the scenes so what's that that's production that's the cameraman right the so makeup, everyone everything. as a whole is being mm -hmm. affected you know what i'm saying wow. right now yeah like yeah, I remember just a couple weeks ago when I was at a, a good friend of mine. She does a lot of work. I ain't even gonna say the TV no, that's show. Fine. She do a lot of work, but uh, like just how this, the pace is slowed down, and it's like they're on the fence of like, well, I support it because we do need higher wages. This is the talent. This is the production. But then she's like, I'm not eating. You know. So, Man. but then when when he mentioned that to me, I'm like, the people to me that will be hurt more are the people that are trying to climb up the ladder and make a name for themselves but the people who've been doing it for a while mm. who have all those residuals coming in and exactly. all of that they have money coming in money you yeah. understand what i mean of course yeah it's, it's hurting a little bit but it ain't gonna hurt like that no, 100%. but it's the people who are just now climbing up who trying to make a name for themselves that's who i see you know no yeah because i mean a lot of thing is like a thing is about the industry is like a lot of people don't actually know the details that go into it so you know there's actors out there like myself right like i've done uh small commercials i've done a lot of different things like that but i'm considered non-union see there's mm -hmm. other actors that once you have to do certain credible things on the idbu and then that's when you can make it to sag after and then you can you know submit there but you have to be accepted to even be in the SAG app. but if you're non-union you can still be um filming and doing all sorts of stuff right now because then i remember mike bless was live and he was saying because he's union that the union saying that they can't film they can't this they can't that right now no nah, yeah so they actually it actually worked in my favor cause right it's like, Cause I, I wasn't big on the control just because i already have agencies and certain things i'm dealing with mm -hmm. so but yeah on that you know aspect of it like exactly they're in the union if the union's fighting against these people you're not working so, exactly yeah that is a that's a rough spot to be in you right. know what i'm saying yeah because they're fighting for the rights you know mm -hmm. so um 
Well, and I, I haven't seen that happen in years. No, years. And it's, I mean, this isn't a two or three month thing. It's been the whole year. Right. Like, this whole entire year has been. been yeah, but it, but they have never struck. When was the last time you heard a strike? Oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't lie. Okay. You know, so, so wouldn't you think that it would be about time for the pe for them to step up and say, "Hey, we need changes." No, I mean the thing. Yeah, I mean I, I honestly agree with you because I've been on the back end. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen talent complain. You know, and the thing is, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I've seen talent that's done some of the biggest gigs or biggest shows in the world, but you're living in the toughest world and you know toughest spot in the United States. You know, so it's almost like give or take you know what i mean but for writers who are striking to me just like you said actors and so forth uh, are being affected but if writers are not writing they're not making money either 100%. so people who strike and stand up for their rights they're also yes you stand up but they can only stand up for so long because it's gonna hurt their and pocket that's too where they win that's typically where they win because you know one most shows they have already have seasons already been filmed you know so right. they can sit back and like all right we'll let them strike and then Another thing about the industry people don't think about is there's always someone trying to climb to get into it, you know? Mm -hmm. So they might be able to pay someone less just for another op for that opportunity. Everybody out there is really, you know, there for opportunity. Okay. So, so um, between the acting, modeling, and you do music as well. Yeah, 100%. Which field do you love the most? Um, love the most, I'm not, I must probably say, you know, I love modeling, you know, cause it's like, I'm big on fashion and that's just something that was just real organic for me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I am really in tune with the music, but I'm also a smart person. So I know it's business behind music. So yeah, yeah I could go spend X amount again and then, you know, give y'all these videos and things like that. But at the same time, I want to curate a team to really properly give it to my audience. That's kind of what I'm, you know. What industry makes the most? Hmm. <laughs> Honestly speaking, I'm not gonna lie. I probably would say for me, or are you saying just the general for you, what I see for you. Oh, uh, I definitely say modeling. Yeah, modeling, for sure. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, sports was good though. I, it was great if I would have continued on, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, once I got into modeling, uh, but sports, you, when you do with sports, you have to think about injuries and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, and then being away, I'd have to be over an overseas basketball player. So that's just something that you know that wasn't never my ultimate dream. You know, I wanted NBA or a right. Boss. <laughs> What's the hardest thing? And is modeling like hard on your body? Um, I wouldn't say so. Not man. Really. Honestly, uh, me personally, just just with me naturally being someone who works out and stays fit, that's why I feel like it was such a normal fit for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I gotta go stay fit for modeling. Like I'm staying fit. I'm I'm a model. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, so I wouldn't say it's too hard on your body. But I can't lie, I actually did get hurt my last set. That is how. Crazy. Yeah, uh, I actually just finished up the. Um, 24-hour fitness national campaign that was just a few months ago mm -hmm. uh some of the stuff's been out it's been on buses on websites and uh in the gyms and everything but on one portion of it uh you got modeling and right. there's also sports and fitness so okay. everything you're doing different categories of modeling exactly so okay. some people might see the print which is the the actual pictures the stuff mm -hmm. you see on the wall that's mm -hmm. print but right. then there's also going to be the commercial part that's why People want to book a campaign because you're getting commercial, you're getting catalog, you're getting web, you're getting print all in one. Mm -hmm. That's when you make a lot of money. Yeah, but you can do that because you're taller because I remember you have certain people who will say, well, you're just a photo model because you're shorter, but you can make you look taller. You can make, exactly. you see what I mean? But you can't be runway because you're, you're shorter. No, and runway so is for, really on the requirements, yes. Right. So what had happened? How did you hurt yourself? Oh, um, like I was saying on the commercial part, I had to do a dunk and it's just real live, like they don't lower the goals, they don't, you know, anything, you know, so it was kind of how the camera was set up, cause I had to get warm, I'm not gonna lie, before <laughs> I got my first, you know, three, so I missed the second one, and then the third one, I got hung, fell on the camera, yeah, and they tumbled Ooh. on top of me, yeah, so I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of, it was kind of rough on me, you know, mm. my. But those my, things happen though. No, it happens, yeah, it right. happens, and it's like, I'm gonna give my all, you know, so at right. the end of the day, you know, it was cool, they iced me up, they Blooper. brought me in. They bought me a Theragun. They they really pampered me, so I don't Aww. need to be too, too worried about much. Yeah, that's sure. dope. Because um, well, that's good that you told me the different kinds. Because when people think about modeling, they're just thinking about runway. No, nah, because that's like the most popular type of modeling. Mm -hmm, exactly, and that gives you a lot of press. But there's print, there's catalog, right. there's sports and fitness, there's um, a runway. Like mm -hmm. we said, there's also lifestyle. There's promo modeling. You Would know? you say so. the most? When I'm thinking about it, the hardest thing that I would think a model would have to do would be, um, especially if you're a popular, well-paid, um, well-booked model, mm -hmm. is to get sleep. 
Oh yeah. Uh, because you would be going from venue to venue, from shoot to shoot, be moving around, flying out, doing this, doing that, 100%. and you still got to look fresh every time. Like there's not a moment where no, you got to like. How I hard is that? Um, I say I, I look at that as maintenance, you know, maintaining, you know what I mean? And um, so you have to like drink the right teas, eat the right food geez, to keep your body water. up. And that's the mask, I, I all of that sort of stuff. That stuff you know, my first thing, I'm an athlete, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm a signed model. Now I'm hanging out with model agents and they're telling me like, hey, can you clip in your nails and clean your nails? And I'm like, oh, I just left the gym. You see, so <laughs> it, it was a big transition for me. Because they not, look at all of those things. Yeah, and I'm just not a, that feminine, you know. You have to I mean? get waxed and all of that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, because I mean, well, a lot of people don't know about modeling as far as a male model. Right. You're not ever really going to go look. Like, think about this. You'll do this tonight. Go see a male model with facial hair. Like, there's really not a such thing. Wow. But, like, but with that, it's a good thing you said that because to me, okay, being a male model, how many people think that you're gay? That's a good question. Um, I bet, I mean, honestly, I, don't, I wouldn't say it comes to me in real life. Like, you know, because. Nobody's going to say. No, yeah. because there is a stereotype. Um, I C. Don't James know was on here. Let's just talk about it. C. James on here, and he say he got uh, called out like that all the time. He, he a model. Oh, and he yeah. said, you know, that's the first thing they get. They get this stigma about mm -hmm. all of the models as being, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, metrosexual or, or just, you know what I mean? Yeah. That because of the fact that they modeling. Nah, 100%. So, you know. Just that like is, hairstylists, just like male hairstylists. People feel like every single male hairstylist is gay. Well, not every one of them, but it's no, but few. No, but they yeah, think they like, think yeah, that, that's nigga. I know, I done seen a few of them, nigga. It ain't no, they'll tell you, nigga. all of them are. Not all of them are. Yeah, I wouldn't say all well, of them are. Well, the movies yeah, predict them. You remember Baby Boy, old boy, say $40, you know, when they were no, trying to sell. No, but I used to, you know I mean, exactly, but that one on, um, what's the one with Queen Latifah? Um, was that it was it was beauty shop? Yeah, where that guy came in and they thought because he wasn't hitting on all the yeah. girls or whatever yeah. they thought yeah. that yeah. he was gay when he wasn't really gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So that is a stereotype. It is a stereotype, yeah. and it's only a question that you would ask because I'd have never even thought about it. <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean, it's, but I don't know I mean, people think about it. I just think there's downsides to being handsome that people don't think about that. I've lived through, you know, that, you know, from assumptions that you could be down and out. People are like, oh, well, he looks good, so he's good. And yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. that, that has nothing to do with what I'm going through, you know. But on the stigma of what you said, though, like, uh, it's something I had to learn. You know, my transition into modeling was way different than other people's because I was an athlete. So yeah. my notoriety came from this big athlete is now modeling. Mm -hmm. And then it's like we're doing it at the same time. And then for me to go into Nike. It kind of just all worked out. And then I, from there, they did try to lock me into that space. But no, I wanted to go like, I want to do fashion. I want to do runway, you know? So I was able to branch oh, out. Oh, so there is a certain space. Yeah, there's a certain, they actually didn't, they didn't even want me to, uh, they didn't want me to ever do no more fashion, like um, stylish, wow. runway. They was like, no, we'll just keep Adidas, Under Armour. I could have just kept going that route. Right. I didn't want to be locked into that space because right. you know who I am. So. Because certain styles, because when you're dealing with fashion, especially with men, you have certain um, clothing that I see they put on some men on these runways, and I'm like. Nah, trust me. I've been in the back of them shows. I've seen it, and it's like, but y'all can go look at all my pictures, and you're like, y'all never seen that, right? No, I'm no. at the same, you're I'm at the same show. You, you, so do you doing choose? Your thing. Yeah. Can you choose and say, no, I'm not wearing that? No. So it's really, honestly, it's like, I guess you really could. You could say, no, nah, I don't really like that look. No, nah, but say, then okay, they won't well, book you. Hey. Have a right. Good one. Yeah. You, you just think about this. Cause you got to think you're telling this designer who probably yeah. put his blood, sweat, and tears into that that look. Yeah. You know, like I'm good. And it's like what? What's up with Kanye's clothes, man? Do you? I mean, you. <laughs> I mean, you know, because he's he's a billionaire, you know, and he he. Well, we don't know. You know, they say a billion. Some say some not. Say, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, Faison say you can't lose a billion when you got a billion because they have to do, give you something for the billion. Nah, but at that's... any rate. That, that, the thing I'm asking you is like I've seen his clothes. Sometimes you don't have, you can't see his face. It's a I lot mean, of black and neutral colors. Yeah, That's well, one what's thing up he does. with that? Yeah, what do you he, think about when you think about his his whole flow of modeling? I have to tell people this because they ask me stuff. It's like fashion is a wide, wide, broad. It's art. Yeah, you know, and it's like there's there's, there's different sides of it. And, you know, I I try to stay out of certain things because of how. Um, how would I say it? Sensitive, like sensitive this is it can real be. Sensitive, yeah. Like. What well, do you? You could rock with him though. You could wear some of that stuff. I mean, I mean, yeah, if the money if, right, if, the money if I was right. booked for the shoot, <laughs> yeah. I'm in it. I'm like, rocking you know it. Exactly. But I'm saying, if I'm going, if, if you hit me up, we going to a dinner. I might not be in there. Yeah, you know? that's all I'm saying. But, but the one thing I've always said, okay, when you see, especially runway, and you see them modeling, you know, Paris, 
all these different shows mm -hmm. and they come out with these crazy designs i'm like who's gonna wear that in public like regular for real? people for real yeah. gonna wear that in public but how many people like a handful of people Just actually for real. wear that on yeah, I mean, a normal basis. And the thing is, too, everything you see on the runway is a sample, so everything might not ever make it to a show. You know, that's so real. that's what a lot of people don't understand. And those are the little things I had to learn, mm -hmm. you know, from doing runway. That everything, there's, that, and that's the requirement side of. It. That's why the height, waist, and everything has to be a certain, a uh, certain measurement because. So they know, do it for the model. It's a sample size. Everything's okay. a sample size. Yeah. So if they produce so. these five shirts, these jeans are all going to be thirty-two sample waist. Size. That's right. You gotta, you gotta fit. Same that. thing we deal with mm -hmm. with so, the clothing in here. How, okay, because you're male. Cause I know with females, especially models, you, they're so much under pressure. A lot of them end up having a lot of disorders, eating disorders because of trying to stay within those sample sizes consistently. No, Cause women have those hormones and then they want to go on those cravings. How real is, I watch movies and you see movies where models be like, oh, all I, all I eat is this, all I can eat is that. Yeah. You know, as much as I want to eat that cake, I can't eat that Are cake. Are you hungry right now? Is that, <laughs> nah, I'm good. I, 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 that did make me a little hungry though, because I, I skipped lunch. You know what I'm saying? But but how hard is that? Is that the same for men, or is it just totally different for women? I say I say it's a little different. Um, women, I, I have seen in that same situation though. You know, just because it's pressures. You know, uh, honestly speaking, I've seen a lot of people. Some of the most beautiful people, handsome, whatever you want to say, is like discouraged or insecure because mm -hmm. um, once you leave where you're from. Where you're being told you're beautiful and gorgeous every day and you get around everybody who's being told they're beautiful and gorgeous every day see it's like you in the nba you know what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. the same thing so some people ain't dealt with rejection and i ain't gonna lie me personally i dealt with I, I mean i had to get rejected before i got told my first yes but there's some people that fold under that type of pressure yeah you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so honestly you know it's it's uh have you ever had to counsel people for stuff like that like friends or somebody who can't cause if you're in a room with a lot of people and they, Somebody might break down and start crying. Mm -hmm. And did you ever have to like, you know, it's gonna be okay. Don't, don't worry about it. Da da da. Cause uh, you've been in. I mean, yeah. I didn't. What I didn't see. L.A. is brutal, man. I ain't, I don't know if people really know the real no, truth about people that. People move out man. there and don't make it. There's people and move back this first month. S sleeping in their car. Yeah, it's it's uh it's, it's, it's what's expensive. The crazy, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen without calling any names or mm -hmm. anything like that? What's the craziest thing you've ever seen? Just craziest thing I ever seen out there. Yeah. Uh, probably shoot being in Hollywood, man. Uh, right there on the stars, I went to Chick Fil A. So I was just chilling, man. It was right after the shoot, I was tired. I was in the car. So uh, you know, I finished. And I, one thing I like about LA is, you know, what I'm saying it's obviously legal to cannabis. You know, what I'm saying yeah, yeah, for sure. The vibe is just a little different out there. So I was just chilling back, and I see a dude. He ran out. He had no clothes on. He just started screaming. So I was like. And the thing I'm talking about, he's right in front of my car though. So I'm just like, man, bro, just not today. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's like, the thing is, there's so much stuff happening out there that someone could be screaming naked in the street. People don't turn or nothing. Like it's Hollywood. People mm. don't keep minding their business. They just want to make it home. So, you know, he, luckily he didn't do nothing to my car, but he went and cracked five people windshields. Like, you know, it's, it's street parking. He ran on the back of a truck and I'm talking about barefoot, jumped through the, the roof, I mean, through the uh, front windshield with his feet on five different cars and just kept running. So I was like, yo. Wow. wow that's crazy. You know, and then you just start seeing the people from Chick-fil-A run out because they hearing stuff, you know, yeah, and these yeah, sirens yeah. going off. I'm like, you know, so I call my manager like, what's going on? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a movie out here. Like, there needs to be cameras yeah. out here 24-7, you know? So yeah, yeah. that was just one of the craziest things that just happened and it was like, yeah, I like it over there. The first thing people say, oh, he on drugs. Oh, no. And he, I mean, he definitely was. <laughs> what? Hollywood, bro. It wasn't even nighttime. This we was were, We was over there last time we was up there, actually. We went straight over there, didn't right. we? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we love it over there. So, yeah, man, I, I, there's a lot of crazy incidents and stuff like that, you know, that could uh, that could bring you down. Skid Row, that stuff can bring you down. You know, it's mm -hmm. not the most positive stuff out there. Let so. me give you a lighter note, man. Like, when you go out there and you hanging out there and you eating your fat burger and you hanging out with these people... <laughs> And you, what food do you miss in the South, nigga? Cause you can't get it up there. Bruh, <laughs> I'm country as hell. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm country as hell. Like, and, and California ain't nothing in the eating. Everyone looks at me like I'm a vulture out there. Cause no. everyone's vegan. You know that's what I mean? Right, like, that's right. I'm, you know, I want, you know, give me that meat lover. You know what I mean? I ain't gonna lie to you. But uh, something I really do miss, man, is just like, um, Fried food in general. They in don't general, have a lot of it, but like chicken fried chicken. Let's say a country meal like yeah, that with yeah, like, like, tell, like gravy, grandies. <laughs> I just said when I, I just said it's only grandies. grandies. They only got them in the hood. Now. That's I right. Stop when you I gotta leave. go over there. But you know, California doesn't have white gravy. 
No we restaurant. Got none. No such thing. Wow. The brown gravy everywhere. No, it, just don't yeah. have gravy. Period. No, they they, they they have a little brown. But I remember uh, a little story when I first moved out there. I was kind of on like you know KFC wave, so I get the you know country fried chicken, whatever. And I got out there. First thing I went to go order it, and I was like, you know, what white gravy? They was like, what is that? I was like, what are you talking about? Stop playing cream gravy. They don't have it. They was like, no, only have brown and salsa. Cause see, it's a different culture wow. out there. Wow. What about? I mean, Rudy's chicken. You know, you come um, here, you eat Rudy's. Man, or yeah, no. Nah. else? Who else? Grips, burgers. I always compare Grips, Sweet burgers. Georgia Brown. Sweet Georgia yeah. Brown. Water yeah. Burger. South Dallas Cafe. Nah, all that. People I mean, talk about Water Burger in the South. Water Burger. Nah, they don't have that up there. Nah, they ain't got nothing like that, man. But uh, they do have Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Nah, <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. Know, I, I used to I used to go to Roscoe's heavy, man. But I kind of just fell back. After all that yeah, stuff. of course. Yeah, I, I was thinking about that. Like, people really... I went last time out. But was we didn't go beer. to that location. No, we didn't go to that location. But we yeah. have been to that yeah, location. I probably, probably should have went to the one on Gower. No, nah, but we done, we done been to a bunch of them. We, I, I'm, I'm hood, bro. No, trust I'm, me. I've I'm been go. to that same one. Trust yeah, me too. A lot of times. That's like, probably one of the ones we always go to. That's yeah, what we mean. like the original. Yeah. You're like, I was yeah. going to hit a little different than the... But then I always see them niggas outside. Oh. So I'm always leery of that anyway. But, I, you know, the check-in method is cool, but you still got to walk like you walk and do stuff mm -hmm. accordingly, man. Nah, like, you know already that if you walk in there jeweled up or whatever, you better be strapped or something because... It's not like... like I'm, I'm just being real because you never know who making calls, who going to do this or that. And anyway, that can happen anywhere. LA different. You don't know who's sitting in their car. There's That's what they're doing. There's in their car in LA. I'm talking about... No matter what you're doing in LA and New York, though, there's always someone watching. I don't care what you say. Yeah. There's always, you know what I mean. So, so you tell me everywhere you go, you're always observative of. You got to man. I might not even be here to this day if I wasn't as observant as I am. That's you know right. What I'm saying? Like living in LA and New York, like it ain't sweet. It look nice. Yeah, the palm trees are good where they look nice. <laughs> I learned. Trust me. Because like he said, it's a culture thing. When you get out to um, the West Coast where it's not humidity and stuff like it is out here, you're not going to see no one sitting outside in Texas right now just chilling, right? No. Yeah, but in L.A. where the breeze is, yeah, there's going to be a, sit there. There's gonna be a huddle there, huddle there. Like, yeah. Like you said, he make a quick call. Make a like, quick call. Right, we got we got flock. And they know when you're not from they there can immediately. Tell. They can tell. He because of how you dress and how you look. Yeah, yeah. So I come in that whole country as hell asking questions. Is y'all the niggas setting niggas up? <laughs> I stand on them. Yeah, Will yeah, I do it? Yeah. Hey, no. All y'all niggas over over here, don't look. What y'all doing out here? Suspicious. Y'all ain't order no food. Nah, bro, I'm that guy. Like, I'm the one come in like that. Nah, and for real. I, and niggas, I, I don't know. I'm just going to ask, bro. I talk. Y'all still setting niggas up out here? Nah, you know? Hey, let me know, <laughs> man. Nigga for crazy. real. And they be looking at him like, shh. Yeah, I still, I be on it, bro. Hey, nah, but that come with respect, though. Because yeah. it's like, man, look, man. I'm, you see what I'm here for. Yeah, I'm not here for that, bro. Y'all for the go on with that. Like, most people not outspoken and a lot of times to get them in trouble, too. You know what I'm saying? Nah. You got to. You gotta be watching. You got you know already what it is, man. Nah, for real. I ain't trying to hear it, bro. Like it could be happening to anybody, but nigga, leave some ass. Yeah. Nah, for real. Just so you know, I'm on point. Yeah, I'm, you yeah. Know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I gotta ask this question. So mm. since you've worked so many different places, because I heard you mentioned New York, you mentioned California, and you're from the South. Mm. Um, being a black man in these areas, mm. what are the difference of how you're treated compared to when you're in the South? Versus that, the West Coast? Yeah, or the North East Coast? or um, any of that. Is there, still, is there still a difference? Nigga, Jay -Z is nah, there a difference? There's a difference for sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think New York, LA, or the South is the same at all. You know, uh, when you up East, you know, and you black, it's like, they don't even believe in that right there. So I, every time they ask me, I say I'm black, they're like, what does that mean? You Haitian, you you look like you. They don't even, mm -hmm. and I had to explain to them what, you know, in the South is really black, white, Mexican. That's how you grow up and then, you know, but out there they got Jamaicans, they got, you know, it's a whole different it's culture out there. But then when you get to the West Coast, it's a more Hispanic culture out there, you know, and then every person of our color, typically talent or production, they move there and aspirations or something, you know, yeah. you, with what I'm doing though. I don't, I'm not in Inglewood meeting people, you know what I'm saying, that's homegrown from Inglewood. I'm meeting people in my little space right. in the industry, you know what I mean? So, um, I like the South, though. You know, that's where I'm from, you know? Hey, like, I told you. But do you see you. where people are treated? Because I'm that sect, like, I, I, when I first moved here, I used to hate hear people saying black person, white person, all of that, because I wasn't used to hearing that. you're not that. used to it yet. Right, I'm not I, used to that. So that's why I like to ask a lot of certain questions, because a lot of people tell me things, and I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. So 
being there and like trying to move up in the ladder in whatever career mm -hmm. is it harder because i've always heard especially for males it's always going to be way harder for a it's black man hard. than even for a black woman and so forth nah, but is it hard yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's extremely hard. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even honestly think it's fair. You know what I mean? Like every space or set I've been on, it's not like I'm, you know, it's just I'm one. I'm that one, you know? So I already know how hard it is just the expansion in my own career. You know, I know I have the talent to be a lot of different things. And uh, I have a lot, of, I had a lot of opportunities as far as acting, you know, but that would require me to cut my hair off. And I'm like, you know, it's always, it's always something, right? You yeah. know, so. Cause they're not looking for that look. But yeah. you can't even blame that with acting because with acting, with acting, whenever they write a certain role, they're mm -hmm. looking for a certain character, a certain look. No, exactly. So you can't really. I wouldn't always say that has to do with race. It's just the look that they're looking for. Yeah. But like even in any of those fields, whether acting, other than what I'm just saying, yeah. or modeling, have you ever been looked over, um, and you know for a fact in the back of your head, without even saying to the person that um, it was because of your race why you were looked over? What? <laughs> Let me give you a rundown of uh, I had a a, a fallout with an agency because you know I've been signed out like probably in the last year I probably signed maybe four or five agencies. So, okay. Um, big casting, you know, it was huge. It was a good a, a good amount of money. Really, I'm not gonna say the company. Really big right. known company, you know. So I get there. I was actually really excited too, you know, and uh, cause you could tell like when you kind of like have a, a better chance cause this isn't the first round audition. This is the callback. Mm -hmm. So I get to the call back, we sign the sheet to go in, you know, and the first thing I noticed was the three people getting an audition, which was behind the cameras on the side was left, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, was white, that mm -hmm. was on the left. Mm -hmm. And they pulled five other models to the side that were black, black that looked just like me, right? Wow. So then they came and handed us all the paper we signed in. They said, y'all can all go now. It was like, um, you know, Unfortunately, you know, we're going to, you know, keep casting, you know, other, but the look doesn't fit the description. So I said, And they said that straight to your just face. Just like that, just like that. So I'm like, to me personally, though, it's not nothing new. Cause I told you I handle rejection well. You're going to get told no in this industry, but it's just like, I didn't, I didn't appreciate it. So once I got out that door, because, you know, you got to, you cannot re react like around to certain people. You could lose everything mm -hmm. at that point. But when I got out the door, I got everybody, everybody was about to walk out to their car. I'm like, y'all don't feel away? I was like, they just handled us like I don't know what y'all did to get here, but I didn't have to be here. I could have been at home. I took a, I caught a flight to come out here. You know what I mean? So what did they say? Uh, Everybody they was like, "No, nah, I ain't never been treated like that." They was like, "Cause the thing is, I realized like no matter how big this person was, cause it was a girl who had like a million followers modeling, mm -hmm. but like." I'm always the person who speaks up and then everybody else comes to speak up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So then once I said something, like, yeah, you know what? I'm like, <laughs> nah, you know what? I thought that was normal. No, nah, that's not normal. Like they just treated us like, you know, mm -hmm. so hundred percent is not, there's not, uh, you know, once you're black, I'm gonna be honest with you, you're black. It don't matter what you are, what you become, you know, so. But then would it also be because like, if you, if it's a model agency and cause I don't know a lot about this in industry. You know more than mm -hmm. I do, of course. But then if you have an agency and there are people are, say, Macy's. I'm not saying Macy's, but say high-end, yeah. whoever. Normally get models from this company, but Macy's normally look for a certain clientele because their clothes cater to that certain clientele. No, 100%. So they're going to want that agency to get those type of models. Yeah. So... Is that normally why they would choose certain people is because of the people who are booking those models or is it just the agency is just all on them? Um, well, the thing is, it's, it's, it's like it's branding. So it's this brand or this agency um, or no, this brand or this company going to the agency right. for the booking, you know? Right. So as far as it goes, it's always going to be some type of diversity. So even if it catered to um, Asians, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like they might book four, but then they're going to book they're one. booking six models, right? They're going to book four agents, one white, one black. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. always going to... That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, like, you know, 100%. So that's typically how it goes. But I'm not too sure after that day, I was like, dang, did they just need to say that they auditioned some you mm -hmm. know, African-Americans to make it seem? Like, you know, because then gotcha. they, they already knew what they wanted. So. Gotcha. Wow. I, I can tell you right now, man, um, them nose is just opportunities where God is putting you somewhere else and it's a it's something you should be happy about because some of those places you didn't need to be and God saved you from turmoil and dealing with some very disrespectful and hateful people I so I love God's nose 
Nah, for sure. You gotta learn to love God. <laughs> nah, for sure. <laughs> took patience. I ain't gonna lie. This makes patience. sense what I just said. Nah, it, yeah. 100%. Perfect, right? Like, you gotta learn to love the understanding of when God says no. And everybody take for granted that God's gonna say yes on every single situation. He doesn't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, when no situation, no doors close, we always say God will open doors no man can shut. But what about the doors that He closed that no man can open? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nah, like, for real. You know, so, nah, that's, so, that's so, serious. Yeah. So you you might not need to be there. It could have caused you harm or anything. Nah, for sure. So that's the whole part about it. Like the music, though. Let's get to the music because yeah. I get spiritual and we'll get to shouting up. Nah, here. for sure. Let's but the music, it. like like, what's what what's going on with the music and, and what are you? It, the boogie movement coming back, man. You might yeah. ought to get your boogie movement. Nah. <laughs> hey, man, I, did, I like the boogie movement, though. I like but, but what's going on with the music? music? But yeah, man, uh, last year I was in a management deal with uh, a little, um, some people out in Seattle. It was cool. I worked with them. Uh, we actually made a good amount of songs. It was decent, but um, some things didn't go right with my distribution deal that I wanted planned. You know, my wow. whole reason for even signing with them people, you know. so when They shelved you. Yeah, damn. You know, so I'm like, they will shelf you. And the, you know, <laughs> and the thing is, I, I make X amount of songs, and I'm supposed to, you know, I don't want to release these songs as just myself. Like I signed with right. y'all, so this can go through distribution. Yeah. Let's, let's really open this door. And once it didn't, you know, pan out to be that exactly, then I just kind of fell back, let my contract dwindle away. That way, I could become a full independent Pretty artist honest. again. Yeah, man. So right now, gearing up, man. I'm just looking to. Um, I got some visuals I'm about to shoot. I love the songs I got, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some, some little bangers, man, you know what I'm saying? So who do who do Drip Jesus listen to, like, when he when he riding down the highway uh, in L.A., going by Venice Beach or whatever? Man, I'm, man, honestly, right now, man, I, I like uh, I like Dirk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, be, I be riding a little Dirk, little baby. Uh, That's kinda, hard. Kind of like mainstream, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, Dirk, but, little baby. What about NBA Youngboy? You don't like him? Nah, I mean, I didn't think I ain't gonna say <laughs> yo, I don't yo, like his music. Boy. I don't listen. To, I, I know he got some bangers for sure. I'm never gonna knock. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like, am I a fan? I wouldn't say I'm a fan. Like, Why is that though? Because the music hard. Uh, Somewhat. He got his. He got his core base. Nah, he got a base. Yeah, I ain't never gonna knock <laughs> him. Nah, he's he good it regardless whether I listen to it or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know. Just. Him being little, me being a little older, him being a little younger, I just feel that like there's kind, kind of something in there, you know. That could be saying? it. That so, could be it. Dr Dirk and them kind of yo, yo, yo. Yeah, age. they up there, you know what I'm saying? So it's just a little bit more what you could talk about, you know. So I just, How old is him being a young boy? I think he might be that age. He ain't 21 yet, is he? he Get the hell out of no, here. I'm man, look, man, look at that. That nigga about 28, he bro. He been eating for a minute. Who? Uh, yeah, he, <laughs> he might be 22. <laughs> he, he nah, 28. he 22 max. He, probably, he, he 22 yeah. max. That's what I'm that saying. That nigga came up on, he came up on everything. That's why I'm it's just something about me being 28 and I can't like I can't just be listening he 23 that's crazy and he got a, 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 a he got a son by Mayweather's daughter he got a few kids but that nigga they're on it man nah for sure yes <laughs> but I think like I said I, I ain't never gonna say his music you know I ain't never jammed he younger it. yeah so that's all I didn't even realize that this dude was that young so yeah I think he been he had some of his hits came out Five years ago, so think about that. You know what I'm saying? Double A came, came on here and he produced some of those hits, and that's why I'm just they they young man. Yeah, man. Them yeah. boys only though. You gotta realize them boys multi multi millionaires yeah, like, man oh, behind yeah. this game, bro. I like a uh, little TJ. I, I, I do like his music though. Okay, he, he a little yeah. younger. Yeah, he a little younger. Who, too, who in da what Dallas rap? What what music in Dallas? The Big X plug for you? Nah, I do listen. Yeah, you know. Like <laughs> you know when I'm you out there, you in there listening to Texas? Out there while you nah, in LA? Nah, yeah, I be my big level. <laughs> hey, top. Off, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, on, man. Yeah, and man. I, I do like Big X. I um, I like Cincy Molly though. I, her, uh, man, she been on here. I love, I love her as, music. Like, you know, women music. Like, I kind of like her little vibe. You know what I'm saying? But as far as Texas, after Mo three, I still, of course, I always jam Mo. But Mo, you know what yeah, I'm saying? that's kind of like. Wow. We gotta we gotta get us another big hit down here quick, man. Nah, but that's why yeah, I'm not thinking playing, about. bro. Like, no, Y'all tripping, man. Like, I'm like that. Too much is like Dallas is growing so much. I just feel like it's hungry for a face, bro. Like it's the right song, man. This shit could blow out the yeah, water. I gotta go. So, um, Darrell said something recently. He another said, day? yes, he said that. Um, artists on a whole the reason why a lot of them haven't been blown or whatever or the ones who have blown is because they stay true to where they from like um biggest plug he's been doing texas stuff texas right Right. Mm -hmm. i mean like and people who don't and of course duro he does a lot of stuff that says texas and stuff like that yeah. but if you don't that's the reason why you don't 
go anywhere? Do you believe that to be true? My honest opinion about that, cause I've thought about that honestly, mm -hmm. and I think that's correct, like 100% correct, because when it comes to music, and it's kind of like what messed with my career with music, you know, because I have so many pro obligations with what I've already done with modeling and stuff, so I have to be in these two other major cities, right? But when, when it comes to music, I think you have to be, you have to build where you're from, and it has to be such an organic culture for the world to want to know, like, so that's what it's like in Texas. Oh, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, going to mimic someone's sound like a, like they were doing, that doesn't do anything, like, yeah. but, you know, Big X the Plug sounds like he's from Texas. We mm -hmm. gonna know he's from Texas, right? But yeah. everybody else is like, where are you from? Like, see, mm -hmm. you brought that awareness, and then what I've noticed is you get that, then you get you get your big deal, whatever. Then you go to the LAs, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm peeping the artist that's there right now, and I just see it because I'm on the back end. So I'm like, okay, he pop, he pop for a year. Now he's in LA. Now he got his PR team. Now he's making different moves, getting brand deals because he already has that sound and that fan base lock. Now you're trying to broaden it out. But you, but you can still put where you're from so people know because even like, um, and the reason why he said that too is because just like what you're saying, you know how each city have a time that they're hot. Like Memphis sound was hot during this time, whatever. So True. some artists coming up be like, man, I'm going to drift to Memphis sound because that's what's hot mm -hmm. and I'm going to pop off of that. But you from Texas. Right. Don't make no sense. But then we, even when you look at acting, look at Jamie Foxx. Everybody know Jamie Foxx from Terrell, Texas. Even if you don't know where Terrell, Texas is from, even if you're not from Texas. Right. He says it so much that you know exactly where this man is from. No, so, 100%. like, why not stay true to your culture and where you're from? I think that pushes you way more and people respect you a lot more. No, 100%. I do, I do believe that. But the thing is, I think it's about when those people do those people feel like the city behind them so i think that's what it's about for real for real like yeah well i can tell you right now man um it's always on and a pleasure to sit down with you just uh, give me your top three artists of all time dead or alive right now how you feel in this present moment present moment right oh, now. i don't care what genre i don't care any genre whatever mm -hmm. what is it number one i'm going michael jackson bro that nigga hard too he care, did man. but he hard I mean bro I'm not, I'm not gonna lie when you got people passing out cause I don't think those times is coming back social media you just another part of me yes I wanna rock with you Billy Jean and all them yeah I, I get it number two, who your number influence. two um and me personally yeah me personally yeah I'll probably say Drizzy that's just me. Drake, you, yeah. you like him like that? I, the thing I'm just talking about from what I've seen as far as just consistency, like okay. other artists that I, I probably do listen to more. Like I'm not going, I ain't played no Drake on the way here. You know what I'm saying? But I'm it. just saying off the like the run he had where I was really, really listening to him and then just being consistent. Like Number three. I'm going to go Pac. Pop. He should have been number I'm one, nigga. That nigga right there, a nigga, he watching you when you lie. telling these lies on yeah, Boss yeah, Talk yeah. One on One. You better put him first. No, I, put, I, put a, I put a lot just into it. it. No, I, put, I put a lot into it, you know what I'm saying? I, no. think, yeah, I think Pac had a broader, you know, broader rise than what he did, but yeah. Man, man. man listen, man, if, if you could go back, like, like well, I ain't going to say if you go back, but when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. if you can, um, if people doing a documentary on you, what would you want them to say and what would you want them to remember you by? I want them to know, like, me personally, just, uh, you know, the story, you know, the the testimony of believing in yourself and keeping faith. Okay. You know, because uh, that, that's that's the main thing that got me where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I just want to be able to inspire people through that, through that story, you know what I'm saying? Just just, just staying in tunnel vision and just not looking left when you're told no, when you think this and that. Just believing them thoughts in your mind is truly what's for you, manifesting those, man. Man, listen, man. Thank you for coming on the show, man. You know it, man. If it, I mean, anytime you in town, when you fly in from L.A., yeah. you need to be right here. No, I'm tapping in. You need to holler at me and say, hey, I'm in town. Check in. You need to check hey, in. Look, look, I'm checking in. <laughs> as, soon as, I, as, soon as, as soon as I get back, I'm checking in with you 100%. Man, you, you know always that, man. welcome to come on the show, man. You're one of our original ones that... You know, we was just getting started, whether you know or not, when you came by, we oh, was, oh, of course, we was started, but, yeah, I you know, know you I, I went up quick, bro, you know no, what I'm saying? saying? You know how you jump no, no. go, like, I'm you were up when you played then, ball? Though, you ain't been playing since that <laughs> moment. I've been watching, I'm like, you're not playing I at had all. to do that, because it, it's now, motivation. We travel so much just to do a lot of those interviews, too. No, 100%, man. I respect that. You know, from, from me to you, though, like, it's a lot of high respect for you guys, man. Y'all doing you it You family, nigga, what did you tell me? Try like, you ain't nephew or nothing around this old, right? Man, it's been and another. You know what? And before you 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 close it it's out, been another. I am going to design you 
A oh, boss yeah. talk one on one. Oh no, give me something oh, special, man. Oh, man. You know, a whole outfit, something different. Yeah, give me right. You know I like that. You know we, I'm okay, saying. It, it, your style is unique, so I can't just come with a regular T-shirt for you. I got to do something different. For hey you. man, look, I'm gonna I'm I'm make it look real nice, regardless, man. We're gonna do something nice with it. Man, man. tight for shooting or something, man. You man, okay. check it, man. Hey man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk One on One. What a boss is talk. And we out. Come on.